and Rashida Tlaib organized with that group and they did. They did protest and they did an insurrection um, into our Capitol complex, stopping Congress and stopping the Senate. So this is just a fraction. She also has a has an extreme record of anti-Semitic language, um, uh, but speaking out against Israel, she supports BDS. Um, Rashida Tlaib is a radical and she does not support or stand for anything that we stand for here in America. You just heard Marjorie Taylor Greene with a straight face, mind you, call Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib anti-Semitic and also accuse her of doing an insurrection. Why? Well, because she spoke at a D.C. rally organized by Jewish peace activists who demand a ceasefire in Gaza. That's why. You know, it sure is a good thing that Marjorie Greene has never done an insurrection herself or said anything anti-Semitic ever because, you know, if that were the case, it might look like she's being a bit dishonest here. I mean, it's such a joke. Irony is dead, and I don't know what else to say about it. Now, the reason why she is attacking Rashida Tlaib is because she introduced a resolution to censure Tlaib and dedicated a substantial amount of time lobbying Republicans to support this meaningless resolution. And when I say substantial amounts of time, I mean talking and tweeting about this endlessly for weeks. If you look at her Twitter timeline, she's made countless tweets attacking Rashida Tlaib, accusing her of doing a Hamas erection, also sharing a video where Tlaib correctly calls Israel an apartheid state, accusing Rashida Tlaib of being triggered it's quintessential clown shit so much so that some republicans have even vocalized opposition to her dumbass resolution and uh, you better believe that she had something to say about those republicans as well so let me let me ask you uh do you anticipate every republican colleague voting for this and if not why charlie i did anticipate every single republican colleague of mine and even democrats because i've talked to several of them that want to vote to censure Rashida Tlaib as well. But I want to let you know, um, I was shocked last night on our GOP conference call when several Republican members of Congress spoke up and said they did not want to vote to censure Rashida Tlaib. Um, that was Wahlberg, Rep. Wahlberg from Michigan, uh, Rep. Um, Duarte from California, and Rep. Young Kim from California. And she even went so far to say, Young Kim said that she didn't want to have to vote on, on political positions. Yet Young Kim, I'd like to remind everyone, voted to kick me off of committees. But somehow she feels uncomfortable voting to censure Democrat, anti-Israel, pro-Hamas Rashida Tlaib. So it seems like Republican Young Kim would rather stand with Rashida Tlaib uh, then stand with me because she kicked me off committees but doesn't want to censure Rashida Tlaib. You know, I kind of get the sense that this isn't really about Rashida Tlaib and Marjorie just kind of has an axe to grind. Now, will there be some Republicans who vote against this? Possibly, but for the most part, I do expect Republicans to to basically all support this. And I also expect Democrats to support this as well. Some Democrats, not all. Now you can find out when this vote takes place tomorrow. I will link to the live vote. But um, yeah, this is ridiculous. It's, it's virtue signaling, but it's right on brand for Marjorie Taylor Greene, who has no core ideology. It's just about bluster and bombast and stupidity overall. Now, in response, Rashida Tlaib released a short but sweet statement calling the resolution unhinged and also adding, I am proud to stand in solidarity with Jewish peace advocates calling for a ceasefire and an end to the violence. I will not be bullied. I will not be dehumanized and I will not be silenced. Good for her. And she also pointed out Marjorie Taylor Greene's Islamophobia, which is absolutely evident. And she's not really even trying to hide it at this point. She retweeted a right-wing grifter who shared a video of himself harassing Tlaib, calling her a member of the Jihad Squad, and also calling for her deportation. Then tagged a bunch of Republican accounts for clout. And of course, Marjorie Taylor Greene is one of the Republicans that gave him said clout. And this rhetoric is always disgraceful. But during times like this, when we're seeing an uptick in Islamophobia, 
Islamophobia, it is downright ghoulish. CARE reports a massive uptick in Islamophobic incidents since the Hamas attack on 10-7, with Muslim members of Congress also seeing a spike in death threats. And simultaneously, anti-Semitism has also sharply increased as well, with Jewish students on Cornell's campus receiving multiple ominous threats, calling for the murder of Jews on campus, with one anonymous person directly threatening to shoot up a building with a kosher dining hall. And on top of that, a literal lynch mob broke out at an airport in Dagestan, Russia, with hundreds, if not thousands of people reportedly searching for Jewish passengers who arrived on a flight from Tel Aviv. And seeing all of the hate is genuinely horrifying right now. And this is why I always go out of my way to emphasize that Hamas does not represent Palestinians and the Israeli government does not represent Jewish people. And I've seen countless Muslims condemn Hamas, if not the overwhelming majority of them. And we've seen so many Jewish peace activists in the United States call for a ceasefire, but still hate proliferates when tensions are high. And people who are opportunistic, who hate Muslims and Jewish people, are going out of their way to exploit this situation, exploit tragedy to promote their hateful agenda. And that's why I think it's really important for politicians to be careful with their language in times like this in particular. But that's a bit too much to ask of a moron like Marjorie Taylor Greene. Now, Jake Tapper, of all people on CNN, took some time to call out Marjorie Taylor Greene for what she's doing. And what he said here was spot on. Anti-Semitism is not a cudgel to be used against people for political points, no, nor is Islamophobia or racism or anti-gay behavior or misogyny or, or any other kind of bigotry. Just over three weeks ago, 1,400 people, mostly Jews, mostly civilians, were slaughtered here in some of the cruelest and most unimaginable ways in the deadliest day for Jews since the Holocaust. This shit is not a game. Very well said. It is especially disgusting for someone who's made so many vile anti-Semitic comments to disingenuously cry anti-Semitism to score cheap political points when we all know that she doesn't actually care at all about anti-Semitism and is anti-Semitic herself. Now, I don't agree with Jake Tapper on everything, but in this clip, he defended Rashida Tlaib. We didn't see that part, but even though he stated he has disagreements with her, he stated the obvious. Something isn't automatically an insurrection because you disagree with the protesters. But I mean, this has kind of become a go-to smear tactic for Republicans since January 6th. Tennessee Republicans justified the expulsion of Democrats by calling their speech during a protest at the state capitol an insurrection. And before that, when trans protesters showed up to Oklahoma's capitol to oppose a ban on gender-affirming care, can you guess what they were called? They were called insurrectionists by Tucker Carlson and others. Some called it the transurrection. So fast forward to today and Congress's only Palestinian member was speaking at a protest organized by Jewish peace activists. And can you guess what that's being called? An insurrection, of course. Everything is an insurrection because she is projecting and trying to deflect. But I mean, for Marjorie Greene, who was an election denier and co-conspirator in Trump's effort to literally overturn the 2020 election, to call anyone else an insurrectionist ever is the height of hypocrisy, obviously. But I mean, this is Marjorie Greene. And even though she is stupid, she knows what she's doing. And she's not just a hypocrite when it comes to her crying insurrection. The fact that she or any Republican for that matter has the audacity to feign concern over anti-Semitism is really rich considering all the things that they've said and all the politicians they've supported over the years. And Jake Tapper also pointed this out as well. Are House Republicans really in a position to censure Tlaib? I mean, the leading Republican presidential nominee, Donald Trump, I mean, he dined with Holocaust deniers. Donald Trump posted a screed accusing liberal Jews of, quote, voting to destroy America and Israel last Rosh Hashanah to nary a peep from any House Republican leaders. I mean, let's just take as an example, oh, I don't know, Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene of Georgia. I mean, Greene spoke at the white supremacist conference run by Holocaust denier, racist, anti-Semite Nick Fuentes, who participated in that hateful 2017 Charlottesville rally. 
Now, Green later said she didn't know Fuentes' views, although they were pretty well known. This is the same Marjorie Taylor Greene who has pushed the great replacement theory in videos, the deranged notion that rich Jews are trying to replace white Americans and Westerners with blacks and brown Muslims. Not to mention, of course, her Jewish space laser conspiracy that a consortium including, yes, wealthy Jews were using lasers on satellites to start forest fires. Here in Israel, Green has gotten some attention for belittling the Holocaust by tweeting, quote, Joe Biden is Hitler, with the hashtag Nazi Joe has got to go, and for saying that then Speaker Nancy Pelosi's House floor mask mandate was an abuse just like how Jews were, quote, put in trains and taken to gas chambers in Nazi Germany. Under fire, Green visited the Holocaust Museum and apologized. Credit where it's due. Look, I don't oftentimes give CNN or Jake Tapper credit, but they deserve credit here. That was a good segment. So Marjorie Taylor Greene obviously is a clown, but I feel like that is the most obvious statement ever. And when it comes to her acting like a buffoon, that's to be expected at this point, right? She's a child. I expect this kind of behavior from Marjorie Taylor Greene, so I'm not surprised at all by it. But what I do have to say is that I am disappointed in the people who are going to go along with this charade all to further demonize a member of Congress who's already facing death threats because she has the courage to speak out for Palestinian human rights in the face of persecution. Now, as I stated at the start of this video, we don't know the outcome of this vote yet, but I expect a lot of Democrats to go along with this. This is what happened when Ilhan Omar decided to uh, condemn money from the Israeli lobby. That's not an anti-Semitic statement to make. It is a matter of fact. There are lots of foreign governments who spend money lobbying the U.S. government. That's just what happens when we commodify elections and turn everything into a money-making venture in our late-stage capitalist society. Israel does not equal Jewish people, right? But she was censured for that. Lots of Democrats went along with the demonization of her as well, and I expect the same here with Rashida Tlaib. Now, Marjorie Greene and Republicans, they can try to silence Rashida Tlaib and they can try to shut her down. But Rashida Tlaib represents so much more than just one seat in Congress. She represents an entire movement of millions of people around the world who aren't afraid to condemn Israel's fascist government. She represents human rights activists who know that Israelis and Palestinians will never see peace so long as Israel's brutal system of apartheid remains in place. And with time, Rashida Tlaib will be vindicated. I genuinely believe that. I think that future historians are going to look back at this moment and be shocked that what Rashida Tlaib is saying here, her calls to end oppression, are literally controversial in the year 2023. But time is ticking. And it's going in one direction, and public sentiment is already changing very quickly. But until that time comes where Israel does end apartheid and there is equality and Palestinians have human rights and dignity, you can count on people like uh, Rashida Tlaib to put in the work to make that future a reality. And you can also count on idiots like Marjorie Taylor Greene to exploit tragedy and use this as an opportunity to promote herself because that's what idiots do.